Police officers are meant to safeguard society, but what if some of them choose the wrong path? From a police officer accused of abusing a child, to a former cop exposed for seeking inappropriate favors from a minor after a sting operation. These are the times when cops realize their colleague is a pedo. Starting with arguably one of the most shocking cases of former Nebraska State Patrol Trooper Brandon Dolezal, who was found with a minor girl in his pickup truck. Um, I just want to apologize to you know, the victims for any damage I may have caused. Um, to the families and friends of the victims who no doubt had to you know, give them support during this. On November 1st, 2021, something odd happened at Scott Catholic High School. A 15-year-old girl went missing. In the surveillance cam footage, she left the school with a strange man in a pickup truck. The man was identified as Brandon Dolezal. However, after a few hours, the suspect came back to the school parking lot in the pickup truck. The school staff recognized the truck and got involved to see what was going on. Dolezal said he was an 18-year-old student at Millard West High School, but the staff was already suspicious, so they kept an eye on him and didn't let him leave until the police arrived. The police looked into the matter and found out that the girl and Dolezal had been talking on Snapchat. Also, he knew the girl was 15 years old from their conversations on Snapchat. Good morning. All right, let's go on the record. CR 21 388. This is State of Nebraska versus Dolezal. We are set for set. Dolezal was a cop in Nebraska. He started in June 2020. Because of strong proof from the girl's testimony, he got arrested and sent to Douglas County Jail. Later, he was in court looking all guilty. The defendant states in his pre-sentence that he was in a position um, he's to help people, not to harm people, at, with, as a patrolman with the state patrol, and he actually did the opposite of that. He used his position with the patrol to try to find his victims. He would talk to them immediately after he snapchatted them and befriended these victims. He would talk to them about his job, telling them he's a patrolman. He would uh, send them pictures of his car and he would talk to them about their cases, his cases, his arrests that he would make. Um, all in which to try to get these young victims to become interested in him. So he used his position of power and authority to, to find his victims. In. The lawyer showed strong proof that he, as a police officer, used his nice car, photos of his arrests, and his uniform to attract young girls. He even messaged them about his cases, encouraging them to meet him. Um, He's tarnished the reputation of the patrol. He's tarnished in these victims their opinions of officers. Um, MK, in her statements to the police, stated that uh, she thought when he asked her to meet up with him that he was kidding. I asked her about that, and she said, well, you wouldn't expect a patrolman to do those things. That's why I thought he was kidding. She's now changed her mind and she has distrust of law enforcement, all because of Mr. Dolezal's actions. The minor came forward and expressed her distrust for the law enforcement having to see the ugly side of this cop. Something I can say here that will you know, undo the damages that my actions have caused. I'm just ashamed of myself that you know, I lacked the strength and the courage years ago to you know, seek help for this. And I realize now how selfish that train of thought was. I was more thinking about you know, what would happen to me if I came forward and talked to someone about this, that, whether that was you know, getting kicked out of the military or not being able to pursue uh, my job with the patrol. And I realized how selfish that, uh, that train of thought was instead of thinking about what would, you know, the negative effect I would have on uh, the victim's lives. I plan on doing everything and anything I can while I'm incarcerated, all the programs, all the classes, anything that will make sure that I never do something like this again. Due to Dolezal's decision to plead guilty and cooperate with the court proceedings, he was granted a reduced sentence. By taking responsibility for his actions and demonstrating willingness to undergo treatment, he showed a level of remorse and commitment to rehabilitation that the court took into consideration during sentencing. However, a predator like him should only be behind bars. So is a sentence and judgment on the court that you be in prison in an institution of the Nebraska Department of Correctional Services on count one to an indeterminate term of not less than 10 years, not more than 12 years, you are given credit for the three days already served. Count, I think it's three, it's also in the, the enticement count, not less than 10 years, not more than 12 years. Count five, which is a child pornography, not less than five years, not more than eight years. Count nine, also the child pornography, not less than five years, not less, not more than eight years. Count 12, not less than five years, not more than eight years. And 
the last count, not less than five years, not more than eight years. All sentences are ordered to be run, ordered served to be run consecutively. This sentence will also run consecutively to the sentence given in Sarpy County. You also, you're also ordered to comply with the Nebraska Sex Offender Registration Act. Assuming you lose no good time, I do need to advise you that you will be parole eligible in a period of 20 years. Your mandatory discharge will be in a period of 28 years. The court announced multiple charges, including child pornography, on Dolezal. Furthermore, his position was terminated immediately by March 2022, and he was given 10 to 12 years in prison. He could not be on patrol until 20 years into the investigation. It was found that he was diagnosed with paraphilias disease and was sent for further treatment. But there was no justification for his behavior. Case 2. Well, Dolezal wasn't the only cop who was caught misusing his power, as another officer was caught doing the same. Come on, come just come on back in. Nope. On February 1st, 2023, Todd Baraka was caught in a sting operation in Genesee County, Michigan, on a show called Takedown with Chris Hansen. Baraka, using the fake name John, was a 44-year-old cop working for the Vassar Police Department during the sting. He had worked in law enforcement and education for a long time, at places like Imlay City Schools as a student dean, as a principal at Merrill Community Schools and as an assistant principal at Vassar Public Schools. John. John. You came over here, John. And when you did that... Oh, I know there's, ca there's cameras, there's cameras everywhere, John. John. No, you can't, you don't, you're not in charge here, John. That's the problem. Ex-cop Arco was asked by the decoy to meet at a specific location, plotted by the sting team. When he arrived, a person pretending to be the young one greeted him and said he needed to go upstairs to get his vape pen. Barako asked the decoy, who clearly wasn't a minor, if he was really 15. However, when he saw the police at the scene, he knew he had been exposed. No, you didn't. There was a discussion online about being 15, John. Hmm? The cameras aren't going to get turned off, so that's not on the table. It's not on the table. Don't get up, please. Well, you don't have to authorize it, because we're here covering the commission of an alleged felony. No. Yeah. So I've seen the transcripts. The person you were here to meet said they're 15. You acknowledged that. No, I did not. Yeah, you did. John, I have seen the transcripts. When Barico was confronted by the cops, he immediately began to deny any of the allegations that were made against him. But the sting cops weren't letting him go that easy. Okay. Just... Okay, I, it's not what I think. You ask if you smell good. Dustin tells you he's 15. You talk about oral sex. There's a discussion about condoms. You say, I typically don't use condoms, if that's okay. What were you getting at? He clearly said He was 15. It was determined that he had tried to meet up with a 15-year-old for inappropriate physical relations. Perhaps the most interesting part of the was that over a quarter of a million photos and videos of child pornography were discovered on the Predator's phone. It was also discovered that he was running a human trafficking racket involving 13 more child abusers. Further investigations were led to bring the gang to justice. And you acknowledge that and you infer that that might be too young. There's talk about where his parents are, if he's home alone. And what is this, John? Explain this. Help me to understand what you were thinking here. Okay, no, you gotta sit down. No, not, you, yeah, you do. Well, you don't have a choice here, John. Yes, I do. No, you attorney. don't, actually. No, you attorney. don't. You do not. I'm an attorney. All right. There's something you need to know. Okay. I'm Chris Hansen. I don't know who that is. And I'm a journalist, okay. television journalist, and I do stories on predators, alleged predators, trying to have sex with minors. Barico was originally charged with accosting children for immoral purposes and communicating with others on the internet to commit a crime. He was sentenced to two years of probation and has to register as a non-public sex offender. Case 3. Although Todd Baracco was met with justice for the sins he committed, but what happened with 
Police Officer Daniel Ramos Aviles. A police officer in Miami-Dade was accused of sexually abusing three girls over a decade, according to records. Daniel Ramos Aviles, who was 40 years old, was arrested by his department. His lawyer, Scott Kotler, stated that Ramos Aviles denied the allegations and planned to investigate further. Three girls, one aged six, reported the abuse. A family member then asked another girl, now a teen, who confirmed similar abuse when she was younger. Stephanie Daniels, interim director of Miami-Dade Police Department, said they would cooperate with prosecutors. During a bond hearing, a prosecutor requested no contact with the girls, citing concerns over Ramos Avila's access to firearms due to his military background. The judge ordered him held without bond and no contact with the victims. However, he faced charges including sexual battery on minors and lewd molestation of children under 12. Case 4. Police officers like Daniel Ramos Aviles should be brought to justice, as something similar happened to another cop, Lewis Edwards. Due um, other means we know are like via the dark web, people access the dark web. Lewis Edwards, a former police officer, made a fake Snapchat account pretending to be a 14-year-old boy to groom over 200 girls aged 10 to 16 online. Edwards asked many of his victims for inappropriate images in school uniforms and blackmailed them by threatening to share the pictures or harm their families if they didn't comply. I think this material. Due um, other means we know are like via the dark web. He was given a life sentence for confessing to over 100 sexual crimes against children. Lewis Edwards used fake Snapchat accounts to contact at least 210 girls, with photos of 207 of them found on his devices. Another method might be to directly communicate with the child, whether that be using a profile suggesting you're an adult or profile suggestion you yourself may be a child and then getting children to send material what we would call first generation material to you is that how you obtain your images and your decent images that that's quite important what i'm saying to you is when we examine this hard drive and this desktop computer where we fully examine it are we going to find evidence of you he pleaded guilty to 22 counts of blackmail and 138 child sex offenses and was given a life sentence.